Uh, good morning to everybody. I'm Jimena and I'm going to talk about uh, the brain. First of all, what is the main aim of this project? Well, it's to discover our brain anatomy through the dissection of a sheep brain. Uh, although the sheep brain is much smaller than the human one, uh, the structure and the texture is more or less the same. To carry out the brain dissection, we need these materials. The sheep brain, a dissecting dry, a knife, clothes, a, a wood stick, and a camera. First of all, let's start with the uh, texture and the general structure. Uh, the brain is smooth and spongy and it looks like a uh, jelly, as you can see in this photo. Uh, it is divided into four main sections, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the brain stem, and the spinal bulb. The brain is, is covered by the uh, skull that is made up of bone, the three meninges, and is protected by the cerebrospinal fluid. Uh, here you can see the different photos of my brain uh, with different shapes and colors with the structure. Uh, let's continue with the brain stem. Uh, the brain stem is a region that, con that connects the brain to the spinal cord. It is located uh, at the posterior part of the brain and it has several functions. It relates to sleep, respiration, it has a, a relation visual and audition reflexes, it regulates blood pressure and heart rate and connects uh, all the uh, brain parts and also uh, it uh, controls the stimuli sent to the brain. Uh, here you can see a photo of the brain stem. As you can see, it's hollow because we can introduce uh, the wood stick and it's made up of a uh, ring matter but it's covered by white matter. Uh, the bones or the spinal bulb is a section of the brain stem that connects the spinal cord and the cerebellum. It's an extension of the medulla, uh, so the location is between the medulla and the midbrain and it has autonomous functions that regulate uh, several body functions like heart rate, blood pressure, breathing. Here you can see a photo of my dissection um, uh, showing the spinal bulb. Uh, the cerebellum is an organ very easy to identify because uh, if we cut it, we can see uh, like a tree because it's called the tree of life. The location is between, uh, it's located between the back of the brain and it has a, a, a different functions. It is very important while we are doing movements or exercise because it controls movement. Uh, here you can see the photo of the bra a, a small brain. Here, as you can see, it looks like a tree because of the name is called the tree of life. The thalamus. The thalamus is a muscle brain mother that controls a sensory and motor signals. The location it is located at the end of the midbrain and the functions, as I said before, it regulates sensory and motor signals and regulates consciousness and alertness. And here you can see a photo of the thalamus that, as you can see, they are like two balls. Uh, let's continue with the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is a very important part because it is connected to the pituitary gland that is an endocrine gland that secretes a lot of hormones. Uh, it's located it's under the thalamus and the functions, as I said before, it is connected to the endocrine gland so it secretes hormones and regulates the body temperature. Here you can see a photo of the hypothalamus that I said before is it, um, under the thalamus. And now I'm going to tell you some information about the two endocrine glands that we have in our brain that are the pituitary and the pineal gland. The pineal gland is a gland that secretes melatonin. Uh, its location is, uh, is located in the deep center of the mid midbrain. And as I said before, its main function is to regulate uh, melatonin and, sec and secrete it. Uh, the pituitary gland is it called the muscle gland because it secretes a lot of uh, hormones that are called stimulating hormones. It is controlled by the uh, uh, hypothalamus and it's located is here in the fore in the in the head. And the functions uh, regulates a lot of functions. It it, uh, it releases uh, stimulating hormones, oxytocin, um, and a lot of hormones that are very important to our body and to work well. Here you can see the pineal and the pituitary gland, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland. The corpus callosum is a white thick um, 
a mass of white matter that is located between the two hemispheres. And it's very important because it controls the functions of the brain and it transmits the information from one hemisphere to the other hemisphere. Here you can see the corpus callosum that as you can see it, uh, here is the white mother. The corpus callosum, the relationship with the epilepsy. The corpus callosum is made up of more or less 200 million of nerve fibers. Here you can see a photo of a tartaran that shows the nerve tracts for the different segments. So the, as I said before, the corpus callosum sends the information from one hemisphere to the other. So also contributes to, sp uh, to spread quickly the seizures over suffered by people with epilepsy. So one anatomy that is doing with the corpus callosum is to cut it. So the information goes slowly. The hippocampus is a small core formation on each side of the brain. Yeah, we can find it in the um, corpus callosum and it functions, it plays an important role in spatial memory, learning and emotional responses. Here you can see um, a photo of the hippocampus that is, uh, is uh, located in the corpus callosum and here you can see it better. The right hemispheres. Our brain is divided into two hemispheres, the left and the right. And uh, they are divided uh, in between them. There is the corpus callosum and the right hemisphere controls the left side of the body and is responsible for intuition and creativity. And the left hemisphere uh, controls the right uh, part of the body and is responsible for logical and analytical thinking. Uh, um, each hemisphere is divided into four lobes. Uh, with different functions. They are the front, the temporal, the parietal, and the occipital clothes. Here you can see the two hemispheres. Yes, this is the left and this is the right. And here you can see me cutting the, the brain. Now I'm going to talk about the white matter, the roots, and the dura matter. In our central nervous system, we can find two, uh, two types of tissue the white matter and the red matter. The white matter is made up of axons covered by milling and the red matter is made up of neurons and cell body. Uh, the location, it varies. Uh, the brain hemisphere, they are made up of a uh, red matter on the outside and white matter in the inside. The cerebellum, uh, also the red matter on the outside and the white matter on the inside. However, in the brain stem, the uh, red matter is in the inside and the white matter is in the outside. Here you can see uh, in the brain hemisphere, this is the white matter, and the cerebellum, this is the white matter. The brain gritties. Uh, it's an elevation on the surface of the brain and it has different functions. I think that the most important is uh, that it protects the brain and it also makes the brain to enter into the skull. Here, uh, there are two types of gritties, the interstitials and the fissures. The interstitials are numerous and few, um, and the uh, fissures they are few and they are more deep. Um, the outer skin of the brain. Uh, the brain is protected by three meninges. Uh, the outermost layer is called the dura mater, that is made up of two, uh, connective tissue. Uh, uh, we can find blood vessels, and um, the, the function is to protect the brain. And its location is between the exterior and the arachnoid, that is the middle part of the uh, three meninges. Uh, here you can see a photo of the outermost skin that uh, its function is to protect it. It's, it's like jelly, it contains blood vessels and it uh, falls the two hemispheres. Uh, as a conclusion, well, once I finish this uh, project, it can be concluded that the brain is very important, it's essential for us, not only because uh, it controls our central nervous system, endocrine system, and all our functions, also because um, it uh, controls our feelings, our emotions, our will, our learning behavior, so we are our brain. Uh, the analysis of, and the study of this uh, project, at first I thought it, it would be a little bit boring, but uh, thanks to the dissection, I found it very interesting and I'm quite, I'm quite good. Uh, here you have the bibliography with all the sources of information, and that's all. I hope you like it, and thank you so much.